Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be going over a polymorphism example based off of what we have here. We have a student and we have a teacher and both of these have the user set as their prototype. So if you need a little bit more background on polymorphism, check out the previous video. And before we get started, you should check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So what we're going to do to illustrate polymorphism is I'm going to get rid of these console logs and I'm going to create a new collection of similar items. In this case, it's going to be called new members and it's gonna be an array. And we can put the objects in here like so, teacher, student. And the whole idea is we can go through this array treating the teacher and the student as if they are the same type, specifically type user. And then if there's some kind of variation between the student and the teacher, the appropriate thing will happen. So for example, you can look at all the users and say, go to work, the students go study, and the teachers start teaching. For now, what we're going to do is we're just going to iterate through these members. So we'll say new members for each, and this is going to take a function. So we'll say function E, which is the element, and the function body, what we're going to do is we're just going to console log. So the first time around, it's going to be the teacher. And what do we want to console log? Let's just console log the say hello, which should be available to the teacher because it's in the prototype. So we'll say e dot say hello, like so. Next iteration, it'll be the student. And that should also work because the user is the prototype for that as well. So let's save, refresh. Caleb Curry says hi, peasant student says hi. So this is pretty cool and it seems to work, but it's not too crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're going to mix it up just a little bit by overriding this method inside of one of these objects here. So let's go with the teacher and we'll just put that down here. So I'm just gonna copy it to begin with and paste it here. But now instead of saying hi, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say what the teacher is teaching. So we'll say teaches, put a space there and then we'll do a loop this dot teaching dot for each and throw in a function here. And then what we're going to do is rather than just returning this here, we're basically going to build out a message. So we'll get rid of the return and we'll say let message and we'll assign it this value. And then once we're done, we can just return the message that allows us to append data to this. So we can go in here and say message plus equals, which will append to it. And we'll just put the element, which will be the class they're teaching and then a base. All right, let's do a refresh. There we go. Caleb Curry teaches math science. And then yours is still doing the original, which comes from the user. So you could put a custom one for the student, maybe saying, hi, my name's peasant student and I am majoring in English or whatever you wanted it to be. Basically, we made a collection and we go through this collection and it'll do the appropriate version of whatever we're trying to do based on what object the current iteration is on. So the first iteration, it's a teacher. So it does the teacher version. The second iteration, it's the student and it does the student version. Well, in this situation, the student doesn't have anything. So it goes to the prototype and does the default user version. So that's an example of polymorphism essentially inside of JavaScript. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And please be sure to check on the next video because we're going to be talking about prototypes of functions. So that'll be pretty uh, cool.